This little tiny glass eel brings a lot of money into the state of Maine. Twenty million dollars. Jeez. Yeah, it's probably three, four thousand dollars there. Four thousand dollars worth of eels. Gold rush of me. What is up, guys? Joe Holland here. It is before 3 a.m. in the morning. I gotta wipe the sleep out of my eyes. I am heading to the coast to see about how to catch and everything you need to know about elvers. What's an elver? You're gonna find out. Oh, there goes a fox. <laughs> It's been a little while since I've been on the road before 3 a.m. We're gonna head to where fresh and salt water meets to meet up with my buddy Abden, who's gonna teach us all we need to know about Elvers. Abden is all set up on a retaining wall on a freshwater river that meets salt water. So he's fishing a high tide. He has an aluminum pulled net, a foam pad to sit on, and a bucket for the glass eels that he catches. Nearer the water, he has a propane lantern to attract the glass eels and elvers. The eels come in from the ocean towards the fresh water on the high tide, and Abdon blindly swings his net to scoop and catch them as they come up the river. The American eel is unique because it's the only catadromous fish in North America, meaning it lives mostly in fresh water but returns to the ocean to spawn, as opposed to anadromous species that live in salt water and travel to fresh water to spawn. Adult eels may live in fresh water from 8 to 25 years before returning to the ocean to spawn. They leave their freshwater growing areas in the fall and migrate to the Sargasso Sea and spawn during the late winter. The Sargasso Sea is a large area of the western North Atlantic located east of the Bahamas and south of Bermuda. It's actually just an area of the North Atlantic that's full of sargassum, which is a kind of seaweed that floats in the ocean rather than existing close to land. For the American eel, the Sargasso Sea is where the life cycle begins and ends. After spawning, the adult eel dies. The eggs hatch after several days and develop into a larva stage. The larvae drift in the ocean for several months and then enter the Gulf Stream current to be carried north towards the North American continent. As they approach the continental shelf, the larvae transform into miniature transparent eels called glass eels. As glass eels leave the open ocean to enter estuaries and ascend rivers, they are known as elvers. This migration occurs in late winter and early spring and throughout the summer months. Some elvers remain in brackish waters while others ascend rivers far inland. Fisheries for yellow and silver eels have a long history in Maine, having occurred since the earliest colonial settlements. The elver fishery is relatively recent, having begun in the early 1970s until 1978 and then started again in the early 1990s. The fishery was non-existent from 1979 to the early 1990s due to a collapse in market demand for elvers. In recent years, market demand has increased dramatically. Elvers are highly valued in the Far East, Japan, China, Taiwan, and Korea, where they are cultured and reared to adult size for the food fish market. Due to recent intense market demand, elvers have now become the most valuable marine resource in terms of price per pound, reaching over $2,000 per pound. The fishing season for elvers in Maine runs from March 22nd through June 7th. Although the fishery may be closed earlier if Maine's quota is met. Harvest methods are restricted to hand dip nets, like Abden is using, or fike nets. The Department of Marine Resources has renewed a lottery for permits, but they are capped at 425 licenses. Yeah, it's a pretty fascinating thing. No weather. South Carolina is the only other place that they harvest them, and they only harvest uh, aquaculture quota. Huh. It's the only state in the country that harvests them like this commercially. 
It's been a fight to keep it. A lot of the other states haven't done the work that Maine has to keep the fishery. Mm -hmm. So they're pretty jealous. I mean, it's a short season, it's 11 weeks, and it creates $20 million worth of revenue for the fishermen. Wow. <clears throat> last year, last year I think the season was done middle to the end of April. It was only like five weeks. Oh, it's quota based? Yeah, it's quota based. I, I'm only allowed so many. Um, the state of Maine is allowed to have us, I think it's 9,637 9, pounds. 2012, 2013, we harvesting somewhere around 18,000 pounds. Wow. So they've tried like crazy to cut us back to nothing, but they've cut us back 50% of what we was catching. It's all the Atlantic states. The Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission is what regulates a lot of this stuff. And um, it's all it's the whole all 13 states along the eastern seaboard. They make up these rules. Same thing with pogies, stripers, everything. Flounder, herring. I've been down to this middle one on top right there. He, he, he just went he's heading towards the light. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I go. I think I saw. Yep. Yep. He's, he's just coming in the back up right now. Oh yeah. Yep, yep plain as day. Yep. Yep, he's gonna have to go. Oh, another one. Right in front of the light. You got him. That's cool. Yep. Yeah, it's fun when you see, you'll see four, five, six women right by your light, right steady. You just stay right on top and just dip them. You know that that's when there's usually quite a few below it. Swimming, swimming by you. Now, are they all coming from the ocean? Yep, yep. All the way from the Bermuda Triangle. Holy cow. In the Sargasso Sea. Yeah. Uh, all the adults will go down there from here and all over. Spawn and the babies come back. The crazy thing about these are they're not a river specific species. So you could get 10,000 pounds or you could get 2,000 pounds. Huh. And all depends on the uh, fresh water content that's what they seek out is the fresh water these will head up towards the big madomic little madomic washington pond live their life until they're ready to go back out and it wasn't very many people doing it there was you know just a handful i guess started in 91 when the big boom really hit and they went to like 400 dollars a pound it was like 2,000, 2,200 people that had licenses at that time. Wow. Back when I started, all you needed was a uh, commercial fishing license. And then a few years after that, they created the Elver license. But anybody could still buy one. I think it was somewhere around 2000, 2012, 2011, something like that, that they put the moratorium on. But they've dropped off. This cold weather just fetched them right up. Right there again, too. So it's really, really early. And I could have caught just what was here. They've been laying here, waiting for the water temperature to get to a, what they like. Because they dropped right off last night. I, I only had a half a pound. So they're pretty, pretty slow tonight, too. The temperature makes a big difference. They don't like moving in this cold, cold water. If it was 50 degrees during the day, mm -hmm. they would be all over the place. No, I see nets out there. Does that have anything to do with these? Yep, that was my wife's net right there, actually. I see those net. Yep, I set it so it was close so she could get to it easy. And they'll go in and get stuck in there? Yep, yep. There's a, what they call a caught end. There's a funnel, like a funnel in the net that goes down and they go into a, something about the size of my bucket, about three feet long. They get in there and they get stuck in there. <laughs> yeah. Is this? There's another one right there. A little better. I figure 
one year we had them it was around 2200 a pound and close to a buck a piece for those right there right now they're yeah probably 80 cents 80 cents 90 cents a piece a lot of them to make up the pound. Uh, every, that's why they a lot of times they only move at night because anything and everything wants to eat them. Mm. It doesn't take much to eat them either does it? Nope. Like a minnow could get them. Yep. Back in 2012, 2013 they had 350, 60 pounds in their nets. Oh my god. Oh yeah, some of these guys made 100, 125,000 in a night. Oh my god. In one night. Was there no quota then, or there was no quota then? Yeah, I was back then. I was, I didn't chase them like a lot of guys did. A lot of guys go all the way to Bangor to uh, Machias and places like that to chase them up the coast because as they come up, they'll come into these rivers at different times. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them guys would chase them and catch them all, all season. But they predominantly just stayed around here, fish here, fish. Over in the sheep's gut, because you could leave here at high tide, go over there and still fish for another hour and a half, two hours, because the tide's so late up there. Mm -hmm. and fish over there and get another pound, pound and a half. A lot of guys used to go to New Jersey and Massachusetts and New Hampshire back when there was no quota and there was really, it was the Wild West. They used to start early and go down, down there and chase them up through. I had a place in one year we didn't have our we chased them up to Bangor and uh, at a place that I sat was it right where the old fish ladder was right across from the hospital power plant there and one day we took a, took a boat up because it was the easiest way to get to a lot of places because the the uh, there was a long ways through the woods to get to the river and the road and I had a wall like this and I turned my light on and there was a band of them about two feet wide and it was just nothing but eels for 300 yards. And oh my God. following that wall right down through. I got like six pounds in like <laughs> two hours. It was crazy. See, it's getting a little better. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's getting a little better. It's starting to move. I forgot my screen. I to take clean them when I get home. Do you get much for like competition? Not, not now. It used to be a little bit years ago. Um, a lot of guys were, that was another thing we did too, is uh, you was allowed to uh, switch at the beginning of the year whether you wanted a fight net or a dip net. Huh. Because pre-2016 or so, you, uh, whatever you've ever always fished with, that's yeah. all you was allowed to have. Okay. You know, some guys would have, before, 2012 or so, you were allowed as many nets as you wanted. Wow. And then the, the, uh, they started regulating it. They brought you down to five nets. And then they went to, if you had fish five fight nets, you could fish up to two fight nets. And then it was switched to a dip net and a fight net if you wanted to fish it. Or if you just had a dip net and that's all you ever fished with, that's all you was allowed. But now, we redid it so... Uh, you can have whatever you want at the beginning of the season, and, but you're stuck with it for the season. Okay. And I've always dipped. I always loved dipping. My wife wound up switching to a fight net. She doesn't want to be down here all hours of the night. <laughs> she was good at it too. Dipping. Yeah. She was real good at it. But yeah, no, I've had this spot for a long time. Once in a while you'll have, it's not now, but back years ago you used to have season they get a couple other people that I fish with they get small quotas so they come down they fish with me down here they'll fish out on that front wall yeah you know one girl caught her quarter in two nights wow she's got a small quota and the other one's a friend of mine's a tribal member passing 40 he fished here four nights he got his 
in and because they shut the shut them off because they hit their quota. All oh, the tribe? The tribe, yep, yeah, passive parties. Yeah. Huh. They all got <clears throat> different quotas by population. Now does she have a smaller quota because she hasn't been doing it as yeah, long? Yeah, she she wasn't as aggressive as I was. Yeah. Hey, she was close, but you know, she hit I think it's 3.4 and I get 12.2. Um, What's the most somebody has? There was one guy, I don't I think he's still alive, he's got a 150 pound quota. Oh my god. Yeah. A lot of guys. Most most fishermen get anywhere from 10 to 25 pounds. And you get a handful that's got over 40 pounds, 40, 50 pounds, and you get, a, I think it's two or three guys in the state that have over 100 pounds. Oh my god. Yeah. So when they go, it goes back to the fishermen for the most part, and then new permits. When yeah. they, yeah. When they Say get if out. One, if one of those guys passed away, mm -hmm. um, that, new, uh, that new permit would get four pounds of that, and the rest goes back to the rest of the fishermen. Wow. So anyone that started off with four pounds every year, you know, would get a little bit of a taste every year. Eventually what it'll do, it'll take forever to do, but everyone will be having seen. Yeah. But it could take 50 years before that happens. Yeah. Yeah, there used to be the Wild West down here, fist fights and oh, people no. throwing each other overboard. Oh no. the night. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You're standing there and hearing hooting and hollering and screaming and next you know you hear a splash. Oh my gosh. Yeah, four guys went swimming up there one night up above the bridge. <laughs> so it must have been crazy back in the day when the price. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, guys lugging guns. Oh Plus my gosh. Plus it was God. cash. It was all cash sales back then. Yeah. You know, some of the dealers, they had one guy that was set up right in the urban parking lot for a long time. Nothing to be sitting there with $100,000 in the truck. Oh. <clears throat> we produce roughly around 1.5 to 2.2 million dollars worth of clams out of here a year. Wow. Yeah. About a about a million dollars worth of elvers come out of here a year too. Wow. Yeah, so this river is Oh it produces a lot of product. Wow. Yeah. I had no idea it produced that much. Yep. Because we got lobster in on the bottom end, on the lower end. Probably that's probably in the millions. We get a lot of fishermen from Oldboro that fish on the lower end. They fish out of friendship, but they'll come up into here. So how far from the actual ocean are we right now? Um, like the last inlet or whatever. From here down, it's probably three miles to the Narrows. Then it opens up to like uh, Hungry Island. Mm -hmm. You got Hungry Island, Bremen Long Island. You got a lot of islands down below. Out, out past Loud's, uh, Loud's Island, outside of Round Pond. <clears throat> That's all open ocean out beyond that. It's pretty amazing that these elvers like pick this river. Yeah, it's a lot. Like I said, it's a lot to do with water, water, uh, the fresh water content. It's like in the Kennebec and in the Penobscot. That's a huge drawing for them. Because a lot of fresh water comes down through, mm -hmm. that attracts a lot of eels. Oh my god, the Kennebec must yep. be loaded. Yep. The Penobscot's really big. Yeah. Um, you know, it'll produce hundreds of thousands of pounds. In the last few years, everyone's done pretty well. Yeah. So they haven't even bothered to fish because they get there late. Because that's so much further, further away from the ocean. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, they'll be they'll be towards the end of the season before they get up there in the middle of May, the end of May, first of June. So they haven't even been able, been fished on at all for a couple of years, two or three years. Everyone's already had their quota by then. Do you guys have a uh, a size limit on your net? No, nope. no, nope. nope. it's just Other whatever. The, the flake nets do. They, they do. can't be any longer than thirty feet from the caught end to the wing tip. Okay. And this is just whatever you feel yep, comfortable whatever, swinging. Whatever you can swing. Yeah. Were guys getting crazy back in the day? Oh yeah, I've had bigger nets than this. I had one that was over two feet across. And Jeez. Had just too much. <laughs> this size here is about perfect. Yeah. A lot of people won't even swing this size. They get the regular net that's about this big. Oh, huh. But uh, yeah, they get a regular net that you can just go buy at the marine store. It's probably two thirds that size. And this 
It's a little better. It's nothing great. Back years ago, this used to be awesome catching that many. But now, do they have like big days in a in a nut in a net too? They they can, yeah. I've yeah. seen I've seen it where uh, I've seen videos like up in the Union River a few years ago. Guy dipped a. Uh, dumped his net it was two five gallon buckets full of them hmm. i see talking 80 pounds at, at say two thousand dollars a pound wow that's like winning the lottery what's that that's like winning the lottery oh yeah yeah he just dumped them he, he, he didn't need that many but he dumped them in the five gallon bucket and just kept pouring them out <laughs> and just overflowing there was nothing but eels there was no water in the bucket at all oh my god yeah you're talking you know, $160,000 set one night. If he could have sold them all. Yeah. That's the one thing we've been pushing for DMR to do is, you know, these eels can take a lot of, a lot of work to get up into the fresh water. And the guys would like, what they'd really like to do is if they get done, they get a big mass like that, they put them up above. Yeah. You know, give them a, ch a chance to get up there. You know, almost like a, a stalking, stalking program. They do it with our wives. State comes in, they'll harvest a bunch of our wives live and take them up to a lake and put them in it. Mm -hmm. You know, so hopefully they'll work their way back down. You know, go up and spawn and work their way back down. Will they let? Will they do that or no? We've been fighting with them to try to get them to do it. They really been pretty apprehensive about it, which I don't understand why. But I don't think they have the staff to monitor it. They're a competing, competing product for the for the same food. You know, anything in the water, they uh, they're feeding on just like clams. It's going right down. Probably no sympathy though. There's probably thirty dollars worth of eels there. <laughs> I wish I could have a really good dip like I was. Few nights ago, hey, you never know when next, I was next one, there'd be two or three hundred eels, four hundred eels in there. No kidding. Oh, yeah. So, those buyers are the buyers set up for like everyday buying? Well, what they'll do is the buyers will um, usually when they get a hundred kilos, mm -hmm. they'll that's when they'll ship out, they'll send out a hundred boxes, and there's a kilo in each box, 2.2 pounds. Well, do they ship them dry? Nope. No, nope, they put them in here and put the oxygen to them. Okay. Yep, they put the oxygen to them. Like in water? Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. Just like you would if you was getting smelts and stuff like that. Going oh, up a little fishing. Yeah. Put them in a bag, put some water in there. And pump they the fly oxygen them over? Them. What's that? Do they fly them yep. over? Yep. 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 Huh. Yep. It's another thing people don't realize too is the reason why they want them at this size is uh, an eel that's already born the mouth and stuff like that will not live in captivity. No kidding. It'll, it'll start itself to death. I did not. Yeah, you get a six, seven, eight inch eel, they'll start themselves to death. This way right here, they can put them in the rice paddies. They grow them out, they won't, they won't know the difference. Huge, huge market for sushi. Smoke eel and all that. Oh yeah. Like a six billion dollar a year industry. Six billion? Yep. I mean he's got the only aquaculture farm in the country. No kidding. Right in Waldeboro. Right in Waldeboro. I didn't know that. Where's yeah. that? Right at the um, industrial park. Oh like the old uh, where the they old had shad? The old factory. Yep. Yeah. Where Where's they doing? were doing the shad? Yep. Just, just, in, just across the tracks from there. Yep. Oh, 
Rodrigo. Fifty, sixty people running around everywhere trying to set the nets where they wanted them. Yeah. It's crazy. Nuts. <laughs> oh yeah, it was like the Wild West. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was fun back then, but yeah, it was pretty unnerving. I mean, oh yeah, people were on edge all the time. People getting robbed. Oh people yeah. People stealing other people's eels. You oh. You want to leave your bucket like this and go to your truck? You come back, the thing would be gone. Holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> so, wow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It was the Wild West for sure. Holy cow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, not like that anymore. It's no, boring. <laughs> no, I, I can see it's not like that anymore. No, no. like I said, just me and uh, a couple other people that fish, they get small quotas, they'll come down the first of the year and they'll set right there. Oh, I guess there is somebody still up there. Yeah, that's probably Jamie just yeah. walking around, <clears throat> probably cleaning his eels. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Jamie will fish there, uh, little Richie Levensella fishes up there, and Micah fishes up there. And that's about it. Now, this place used to have. 25 30 guys up through here wow yep do you think the quota system helped it or uh, well i think switching being able to switch to fight net but yeah. before that all those guys that were here were all dip netters yeah that's all they were allowed to do oh okay so yeah switching you... so you can have either or at the beginning of the season changed a lot of yeah a lot of the guys are older yeah I mean, back when i started i was in my 20s yeah i'm over 50 now so yeah do you think you'll switch it, ever switch over no, to No, to that? I love doing this. Nice. That would have to be something drastic for me to switch. Yeah. I love doing this. I love being out at night doing this. Pretty peaceful. It's pretty amazing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Very peaceful. It gets rocky until then and it gets soft. The outs on this side of it though, it's I sink to my knees. in there. Yep. Quite a bit of jelly. <laughs> Something hatches in it. You Sometimes you'll get jelly like I do dipping. Huh. It'll come up the net and be all full of jelly. Looks like jelly in these. Out. There's the cover. Rinse this out a little bit. That's a pretty slick net, huh? Yeah. Are there regulations on how wide it can be? Yeah, it can be can only be 30 feet from wing tip to the cod end. Whoa. 30 feet. Yeah. And then width? Anything? No, on that? it don't matter. Um, and height doesn't matter. This is an eight footer. Mm -hmm. um, oh wow. Uh, some of these guys, like that one there, is probably a ten footer. Wow. I'm having another one built for us that's a ten footer, so we can put it. Put it up above on the other side of the wall. Oh, that guy's got his from the top of that wall down? Yep. Wow. Yeah, he's got a 10 foot net, I'd say. Yep. 
And these got to get checked every... They're supposed to be every 16 hours. Mm -hmm. That's an odd number, isn't it? Just yep. based on tide? Or... Yep. Yep. That must have been awful back in the wild west of this, oh, having, yeah. a, having a net out. Oh, yeah, cod ends being cut off. Oh, my God. Guys would run down, cut the cod end off, and run with it. Well, that's awful. Yep, they'd cut it and just cut it right off there and lug her off. Jeez. Yep. So you don't know what you caught yet? No, no, she won't till we get back to the house. Cool. She'll screen them out there. Was it like baby jellyfish or something? No, well, it's, something's hatched. Oh. Could be krill. I'm not sure what it that uh, hatches out of it. You see a couple of eels in there. Oh yeah. It plugs the holes up so you can't get the water out of it. Do you want me to grab the blue one too? Nah, dump it. Dump it in that dry net. Stuff's pretty nasty, huh? Yeah. What are they, Tommy caught or something? I don't know. What are these fish? Ah, those are chubs. Oh, oh no, salt water chubs, yeah. Yep, oh, yeah. So you try to get that net to catch everything. That's the good thing about those nets, they catch a lot of that jelly and get it separated. There's a couple of oh yeah, I see them. Yep. He wiggled his way right out yeah. through. Another one right there. Wiggled his way out through. Yeah, there's one over there. I don't know if he's dead or alive. So another thing too is sea fleas. Sea fleas will bite them, kill them. No way. Yep. So everything wants to get these guys. Yep. Take another scoop out. Sometimes you have to do this two or three times before you get all this jelly out. Mm. Is that like a new problem this week? No, or no. Always. Um, everything comes in stages. Yeah, yeah, it does. It comes in stages. So. Like the first few nights, I didn't have any jelly. And the last two or three nights, um, some, I, like I said, I think something hatched. And all of a sudden, I get in, at a certain time of the tide, I'll get all that jelly. See a few in there. Not many today. Not like she had yesterday. Not even close. <laughs> You never know. That's the thing why I like dipping. Because you never know. You could go down there and catch a pound, yeah. two pounds. Next night, catch nothing. Yeah. It's. Yeah, it's probably three or $4,000 there. $4,000 worth of eels. Gold rush of Maine. <laughs> yeah, truly is. Yep. Yeah, they say they claim it's like a 90% mortality rate on them. Wow. So maybe 10% of them make it to adulthood. But like I said, I believe when they are adults, they produce a, a million per foot. A million a foot. A million babies per foot per year. Yeah. So they're smaller than a, than your hair. 
Oh yeah. When they're patched or oh, blends. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I believe that's what it is. So I saw one black one earlier when I yeah, got Yeah, he's here. a... That one right there, yeah. There's one right there. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. They don't really... If he goes through the net, he's legal. I mean, there's a certain size. Mm -hmm. But they really don't want them. Oh, okay. Because they, uh, they've already developed a mouth. They've been up in the river for a little while. Not very well. There he is right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. You know, the, he's legal, but yeah. um, they don't really want something like that. I'll put, yeah. him, I'll put him back. Just get a bucket here because there's some water in it. When I go back down, I'll take, dump him back overboard. That's the whisker, really. Oh, wow. Well. There's a few. That ain't bad. Oh, you wait. Yeah? Oh, yeah. We're going to have a good night. Yeah. Oh, that's slick. And we'll just swim through. I'll swim right through. That's slick. And all the grass and stuff stays in there. Yeah. Yep. They're pretty fast. Wicked fast. What else happened in the Wild West? Guys would grab your bucket. Oh yeah, some people would come down and you didn't dare to leave your bucket alone. They'd come back and it could be empty. Jeez. <laughs> yep. And it was shoulder to shoulder sometimes? Oh yeah, there was it was there was people lined up. There'd be fifty people down here. Right in this one area where I give it all by myself now. <laughs> There'd be fifty people here. Yep. Hooting and hollering all night and all kinds of craziness. Any fights? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I was down here one night. Four guys went in the water. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah, they had fights this year. Really? Oh yeah. Yep. Down one. I guess they had some issues down in Pemaquid and issues in Camden. I used oh. to go to those places. I don't go into them anymore. Was it over like location? Yep. Yeah, that's my spot. No, that's my spot. Well, if you're there first, you don't get it. Yeah. You know, the other person doesn't get it. So one good thing down here is most everybody's established their spot. Yeah. So it's pretty good down here. But you get places that are early, early uh, in the season. They want they want a particular spot. Getting there. Still, still not very good. Little guys. Yeah. That's what they like though. I think them little ones. That seems like more than the other night. Yep. Getting a little better. Bigger ones in there. Yeah, there's some bigger stuff coming in. Nice. Yep. That was a good one. There's probably a couple hundred eels there. Seems like they're coming in late. The moon's going behind the clouds, that's why. This <clears throat> they could have been driving them tonight to moon. <clears throat> nice. We'll stickle back. A couple hundred eels are better there.
I think them things are close to a dollar a piece. <laughs> It's crazy, they go all the way over to Japan with them. Yep, over to Asia. And then back, they grow them, them out and they'll send them back here. Alive? Yeah, no, yeah, a uh, lot of well, a lot of times I think they process them over oh, okay. there. They'll smoke them and stuff like that. Cause smoke eels big here from what I understand. Huh, I Not that I'd eat it, but. I didn't know that. Yeah, smoke eels, smoke eel is pretty big here. It wasn't quite as good. I probably didn't dip quite as long. Yeah. Still, still, hundred bucks there. It's pretty sweet. Hundred dollar bill, no better. Probably take that, wouldn't you? Oh yeah. Scoop Dip for five minutes. Five minutes for a hundred dollar bill. Yep.